What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about doing color correction using the curves tool. The benefits of using the curves tool is it's much more specific when adjusting color. Now let's get started. First things first, let's adjust the layout. Let's head up here to the different layout choices. Right now we're in the editing layout, as you can tell, because it's highlighted blue. Let's go next door and click on the color tab. You'll notice it's gonna add the Lumetri color panel here, and that's where we're gonna access the curves. And I also have all of my video scopes up here. If you don't have them, always come to window, head down to Lumetri scopes and make sure that's clicked. If not, it's just in one of these tabs here. And you can also right mouse click and add or take away different ones. These are the three I use. So those are the examples I'm gonna work with. So if you head over here to the Lumetri color panel with the basic color correction, which my previous video is on, if you wanna check that out. But today we're gonna to work in the curves panel, the third one down. So now you're gonna see the big curves square. We have the light and dark. We have the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. Let's go back here to the tonal. So when this is highlighted, you're dealing with the, you're dealing with the black, the white, the midtones, the shadows, the contrast. And that'll be represented here in this waveform. And then we have the RGB, which is down below, be affected by these three tabs. This is the U and saturation vector scope, and we'll deal with that last. So the order that I like to work in, I like to attack the tones first, then I jump down to the color balance, which is the red, green, blue, and then last I work with the saturation and the U. So let's go over this curve just a little bit. So everything here to the bottom left represents the pure black, the true black. All the way up here to the right represents the white, the purest white. And then in the middle, it'll kind of be the midtones, and then the lower midtones, shadows, and then past the midtones, the highlights and the upper highlights. And just remember, everything to the left and up will raise it, and everything down to the right will lower it. So when you're watching your scope over here, and you can tell everything, this is a very flat picture, so everything's smushed together in the middle. That's why it looks, there's no contrast. It looks kind of murky and muddy. The blacks aren't really black, the whites aren't really white, the color's flat. So we wanna raise everything up and everything down. And remember my previous video when I talked about how to read scopes, the zero represents the truest black and the hundred represents the truest white. So in here, the darkest part is here, you can see, and it's nowhere near to true black. You can tell by here because there's a big gap. So let's work on that first. So let's head over here. Let's grab the black. You'll notice in the waveform when I raise it up, the line gets further and further away from zero from the blacks. It just gets higher towards the top, which represents white. So let's bring it down. And remember I said everything drug to the right and down will bring it down. So we're gonna try to get that line close to zero to where the darker colors will be closer to black. So now you can see it's made a big difference here in the middle and these colors are closer to black. Now let's look at the whites. There's not a lot of white here. It's just a few of the flowers. So we don't wanna go too far up, but if we bring this back a little bit, remember up and to the left, we'll raise it. Obviously it's getting much brighter. But a lot of this here are midtones and highlights. So we're gonna come here to the middle where the midtones and then bring it up that way. We can even bring the white a little further back. So now there's at least a little more contrast in the video. You can tell here it's spread out because when things are tighter and closer to the middle, that's a low contrast. And the more they're spread out through the scope, evenly on the top and the bottom, that's the contrast because it's separating. It's a contrast from light to dark. So I'm gonna bring this over here maybe bring the highlights, maybe the lower highlights a little bit more. And then the shadows, I'm gonna bring back down a little bit to add a little more contrast. So now you can really see those flowers separate from the background, from this darker background. It feels like it's popping more off the page. So I'm gonna turn that on and off and show you the difference. Massive difference. And you can tweak it however you want if you wanna just you know work with just a little bit of the highlights only, the upper highlights or the midtones. You wanna come down and bring the shadows even darker. However you want to play it, you can play with it. And remember, this is just for the tones. It's just for the black and white, the grays, the contrast. And then we come down here to the RGB. It seems pretty balanced. You can tell the blue's a little high here in the highlights, but overall, it's, the shape is pretty much the same. You'll notice some if it has a heavy cast, if it's heavily cool, the blues will be much higher, or if it's overly warm, the reds will be warm, and then you can lower these accordingly to balance it out. But just for that purpose, let's say we want to lower the highlights and the blue down just a little bit. So let's come over here and let's switch to the blue channel. And the same things, this is the highlights, the shadows, and then in the middle. So I wanna, I look over here and it's just the highlights right now that are too high. Everything else is kind of even. But let's just bring the highlights just down just a, just a tinch to try to make it a little more even. Okay, so now they're looking, I'll go down a little bit more. Okay, now it's looking a little more even. And the same thing, you come down to the shadows and the dark areas, it's pretty much balanced. So I'm gonna say that's good. But if you do need to adjust, like I said, if it's too warm, you can pull the reds down 
by coming to the red tab. And you can bring it down as much as you need in whatever place you want. So remember, the middle here is midtones, highlights the next little section, and then the pure peak top is the pure whites, you know, lower midtones, shadows, and then the pure black. So obviously you can see when I adjusted this red too far down, you can see now in the vector scope, clearly it's down. So if you were to adjust this, if this is how the video came, you would then raise the red until it's a little more balanced. Now one more thing, you can add as many little key points here as you want. And if you want to erase all of them and just reset it, just double click one of them, it goes back to normal. Let's say you want to just remove one. Let's say you have these all tweaked everywhere and there's a bunch of them. If you hold down command, you'll see the little minus tab, see the minus switch on the pen tool and just click it. It'll just release the one. So now we've decided the contrast is nice. The whites are a little, we can maybe even go a little higher on that. So once we address the highlights, the low lights, the shadows, the black, the white, the contrast, all that, then we move to the RGB and we've adjusted the colors. We lower the blue a little bit to make it more even and balanced. Because remember this hard line, this hard line, it's all the same left to right. So this left to this right is the same from this left to this right and is the same from this left to that right. And it also mirrors this left to that right. Okay, so now we've got that balanced. Now I'm gonna head over to the vector scope, which is this tool here. And this represents the U and saturation. So right below the curves, there's a general saturation. And in a later video, I'm gonna go over all these, but for this specific video, I'm just gonna deal with the saturation. You can grab this bar at any point in here and raise it to add saturation or lower it to take away saturation. So if we drop it all the way to the bottom, obviously it's desaturated, all the color is gone. And you also notice this kind of snow powder in here is, is much tighter, it's to the center. It means there's no color. And if we raise it up, you can see it grow. So now it's too saturated, but you can see the cut, you can see the powder kind of blowing out. So it gives you the amount of saturation. This is also kind of a safety barrier. When you pass this, it becomes grossly oversaturated. I'm gonna scale this back a little bit. Something like that. Just to recap, this scope here, we started here. So we dealt with the black, the white, the gray, the midtones, and the contrast. And once we balance that out, I then jump down to the color temperature. A lot of times if there's something that's shot that the color casts the white balance either got it too cool, too warm, whatever it is you can adjust in here and use these as reference. And then last, I'll deal with the U and saturation, get the saturation right. And that's my traditional workflow. So let's go look at it before and after, click it off. So that's how the image was before. Once again, look at all the scopes to the left. You can see the massive difference and how they help guide you to get a correct color. Click it on, much better I feel. Anyway, that is the basic on how to do color correction with the curves. I would definitely try to spend a lot of times in the curve because over time, this is the tool you'll use a lot. I would highly suggest practicing using the curves because you can get much more specific than the standard basic color correction tab up top. Anyway, hope it helped. And if it did, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel. That being said, have a great day. Later.